My name is Willie Eicher. I am here today with my pastor, Bishop O.C. Isom II from Word of Apostolic Ministry, 641 North Crystal in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Bishop Isom has been married to a lovely woman for 40 years, has two daughters, Tiffany and Clarissa, and also one son, Andre. He is also the state of Michigan bishop. Bishop, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, um, I was raised up in Harvard, Michigan by my uh, mom and dad. Uh, my father was deceased, but my mom, who was feisty, uh, raised me up in, in the admission of the Lord, which I appreciate very much. I love her for that. And uh, But I, all I can say is that the Lord has been good to me. He has blessed me to live as long as I give him the glory and praise. Bishop, what inspired you to write a book on caused by gossip and attitude and conflict in the church of all places. This new attitude that, uh, and epidemic has been loose in the church for the, from the beginning of time. Gossip has caused so much hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, uh, called individuals, uh, they, they refuse to speak to one another. Uh, this spirit of gossip is just a mess. And that's why the church is divided today because of gossip and conflicts. Why do you think that Christians are struggling now with gossip and attitudes in the church? What's the struggle? Because they are carnal. They are carnal. They are walking in the flesh. And the Bible tells us that walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, Bishop. Let's tell them how you think you get the book that was caused by gossip. You get this book at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Arthur House, or email me at R-I-C-K-Y-I-S-O-M 628 at yahoo.com or give me a call at 269-519-0459. You know, I like uh, chapter 3 when it says nothing is open as many times by mistake as the mouth. And you said once we get the mouth under control, then we got our whole body under control. And then also in James 3 and 10, it says that the mouth issue blessing and cursing and can you imagine cursing coming out of a blessed mouth? Hmm. So what were you thinking when you wrote that chapter? What was on your mind? What was on my mind, as well as the book of James, how the tongue is unruly. The tongue is very unruly, and if you don't control that tongue, you're going to let stuff come out of your mouth. It ain't going to be like you're a Christian. You're going to say things that you know you shouldn't be saying, because that's where your tongue can take you to places that you never thought you'd go. They say that the young people is gospel, that they have no, no direction. Is this true? Yes, it is. Our youth are given an example to our older adults. When we set an example, they follow us. They see us gossiping, they're going to do the same thing. They see us keeping up drama, they're going to do the same thing. They see us hating one another, they're going to do the same thing. So we, as adults, got to put a stop to it. We got to walk in the spirit, as I before said, and let our young people see the light within us. Well, Bishop, I think they got the pen and paper now. Could you give them the address one more time? Yes, I can. I have found a way that you can get this book. You can go to Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Arthur House, or you can email me at R-I-C-K-Y-I-S-O-M 628 at yahoo.com or give me a call at 269-519-0459 or you can visit me at Word of Apostolic Ministry 641 North Crystal, Benton Harbor, Michigan or and I'll be glad to autograph your book. You know, Bishop, in your book you used a lot of quotes for a lot of famous people from family. Remember the one you wrote about your mom? Yes. Did you tell us about it? That quote from uh, my mama wrote about how that gossip ought not be, otherwise we should keep our mouth closed uh, because there are a lot of things unsaid need to be unsaid because once we open our mouth, uh, all type of negative flies comes out of our mouth and we destroy each other by opening up our mouth speaking negative words. Chapter 8. Chapter 8 deals with emotional wounds. Emotional wounds is a psychic, I mean, it brings on psychic behavior, all types of behavior. It causes people to do all, even to the point of suicide. I mean, put people under stress, worry, uh, don't even want to come to church no more. 
because that's how bad emotional wounds is. People do not know the power and effects of how bad behavior brings on emotional wounds. Because once you have emotional wounds inside of you, you don't know what to do with your life. You don't know how painful that is. And there are a million individuals out there today are struggling with emotional wounds. But we are here to help you. God's unconditional love is here to restore you. Okay, get your pen and paper. One more time, Bishop. Let them know how they can get the book. Go to Arthur House or Barnes & Noble. Uh, and, or you can email me at R-I-C-K-Y-I-S-O-M or give me a call at 269-519-0459. When you were doing the research for the book, how long did it take you to write that book? It took me seven years to write this book. I interviewed individuals all over the world and how that they were hurting about gossiping, hurt me. They, they mainly source, they said, I thought the church was supposed to be a hospital. Now I said the church is a hospital, but they said, the most wounds I have came across was in the church. They said they, would, they never thought that the church would cut me, bruise me, beat me up. They said, where can I go? I thought the church was a place of a hospital. But they found out the church in a hospital is an emergency ward. So for the, but we got to get to this place that the church comes to heal, not to hurt individuals. Bishop, once again, just wonder, tell them how they can get the book. They're getting their information on this and they're getting their paper pen. Just in case, just in case, let them know how they can get the book. I'm just curious about that. I found a way that you can get this book. You can go to Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Arthur House or email me at R-I-C-K-Y-I-S-O-M at Yahoo.com or give me a call at 269-519-0459 and, and this book will bless your spirit soul and call you to see that God can deliver you, God can set you free from being a gossiper and start conflicts in your own local church. Bishop, the uh, chapter that you wrote about the pimp, okay. There, there are pimps, pastors, leaders, ministers in the church who, who's out there to fleece the sheep. Their goal is all about uh, prostituting the church for money, for gain. That's all they want to do. But those are, are not be, but they are there. We got to find ways of, of shutting them down, shutting these houses down, shutting these false leaders down, because God's want a church, amen, that can bring in souls, that can cause souls to be saved in these last few days. When you were working on this book, Bishop, I know it was a lot of time, but is there anybody else in your family that you were inspired by to write this book that gives you some input that you just really had that, oh, and you just had to use that? Yes. Um, I use my family members, they've helped me, I, I watched them, they said things that, uh, quotes, they've said that I put them in my book because those quotes help brings out the flavor in the book. And so God knew when uh, for them to say the right word to, to put in my book, they would call that book, and then to flourish. I hate to ask you, Bishop, but we gotta give a chance to write it down. So let's give it one more time. Good. I like to hear that because I want you to have this book. Go to Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, uh, Arthur House, or you can email me at R I C K Y I S O M at Yahoo.com, or you can give me a call at 269-519-0459, or you can even visit us at Word of Apostolic Ministry at 641 North Crystal, Benton Harbor, Michigan, and I'll be happy to autograph your book. Book that you want to say now, something that you want to push. Is there a special chapter in there that you would like to, to let them know? Gossip, according to the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter and the, and the 8th verse, the Bible says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Gossip is a form of lying. So, if you don't want to go to the lake of fire, you better stop gossip. Because gossip will sing to the lake of fire. You can do all the shouting you want, all the preaching you want. But as long as you gossip, you're on your way to the lake of fire. Okay, did you get that? You got your pen? You have your paper? Please. Okay, Bishop, let's give it to him again. Go to Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Arthur House, or email.
email me at R-I-C-K-Y, I-S-O-M 628 at yahoo.com or give me a call at 269-519-0459 or you can come and visit us at Word of Apostolic Ministry 641 North Bristol, Benton Harbor, Michigan and I will be happy to autograph your own copy in Jesus' name. Did you get that? Okay. Hold on. Is he going to do it again later? Please, hold on. One more thing for you, Bishop. I just want to say it's been really nice talking to you. I just want to say I've learned a lot about the book. I was really inspired when I was reading the book, and it was really interesting. But what, can you, what else can you tell them? Just wet their appetite a little bit. I know they really want this book. They really need this book. But can you wet their appetite, give them something else, and they can say, oh, yeah, I can't relate to that. Gossip is, is sinful. Gossip brings about hurt, pain, and, and emotional wounds. And, and we as saints of God, who is the most high, must stop the gospel. Now, my next book is called Wounds Caused by Gossip, Attitudes and Conflicts in the Workplace. And everybody knows who go to work every day, they work around or they have experience working with difficult peoples in the workplace. Working with difficult peoples in the workplace it's hard on your mind. You have to deal with them every day. Those who are lazy, you got to do their work and your work at the same time. Um, and so that's a, that's a lot of pain on you, frustration. You get mad, you get angry sometimes. You get discouraged. Sometimes you don't even want to go into work because you know you got to work around those difficult and lazy individuals in the workplace. But the workplace should not be that type of uh, environment that you work around. You should be able to go to work and work as a team, work as a unit to get that uh, job done to your customer. But on the other hand, I found out that difficult people will show up for work every day. They will sit down and watch you work and keep up all types of drama in the workplace. In the workplace, there are bad leaders. There are leaders who like to uh, keep up mess as well as the soldiers. There are bad leaders who don't even care about uh, those in the workplace. They care about their pocket and their title. Also, we talked about in the workplace, we talked about uh, being things in confidentiality. You can't say everything in the workplace. Things have to be said according to that individual and the individual only. We also talked about there should be working as a team. Teamwork is very important in the workplace. When you get everybody on one accord, everybody pulling together, make sure their customer is satisfied, working as a team. If that other person is hurt, you, you get up, you say, you know what, I got this. And that's what teamwork is all about in the workplace. We also talk about taking care of your customers. You gotta make sure your customers is happy. When a customer comes in the store or in your place of business, don't point to them where the product is or, or where that department is. Take the next extra mile, show them where it is. That's good customer service. We got to learn that because your customers keep you in business. If that customer walked to another place, if every customer walked into you, ain't got no job. So you really need your customers. So we got to take care of our customers. We got to take care of one another. There is favoritism in the workplace. There are prejudices in the workplace. All this goes on in the workplace. But this book is not just a natural book, it's a spiritual book. It brings up things that need to be said, that hasn't been said, but this book God has given me, it, it tells about different things that, that need to be, uh, that's, that's going on, that we must talk about it in these last few days. Because people are tired of going to work hurt. And also, when you go to work these days, you gotta pray. You just can't go to work, that's why I put in this book, you gotta pray. And, and I, put a, I put a prayer, uh, a word that you just pray every day because it's very needful to pray because there are leaders that will bash you, that will cuss you out, that will say anything about you. But we got to say, as being leaders, you gotta lead the people that Christ have called you to lead them because they are your disciples. Leaders got to understand, and leaders got to have a vision for your department. You can't lead any kind of way. You got to have a vision that everybody under you got to know where we're going, what's our focus, and what's our destiny. So most leaders don't have no vision in their department or in their place of business. 
They just tell folks, just come to work, do what you want to do, and that's it. So, but we must understand the workplace is a vital place to work in. It's a place that we got to get together and work as a team. So again, you get this book. You can get this book at go to out of the house, Barnes and Noble, or you can email me at rcky isom628 at yahoo.com or give me a call at 269-519-0459 or visit me at Word of Apostolic Ministry 641 North Crystal Benton Harbor, Michigan and I'll be happy to autograph your book. Get this book today. Thank you and goodbye.